There are three resources on the battlefield in Company of Heroes 2. Manpower, munitions, and fuel. Bigger armies take more manpower to field. Smaller armies take less manpower. As your army gets larger, your manpower rate slows due to upkeep. If you lose large numbers of forces, your manpower rate increases. In order to increase the amount of munitions and fuel you earn, you must seize the initiative and capture strategic points on the battlefield. Moving infantry squads within the white capture zone of the territory will start the capture. You cannot capture a territory with enemy squads nearby. You must remain vigilant and ensure the territory is connected to your base. If the territory is not connected, then the territory will flash on the minimap. By constructing fuel and munitions caches on your territory points, you can increase your resource rates even further and force the enemy to destroy the cache before they can capture the territory. Use your pioneers to build caches and watch for Soviet combat engineers attempting the same thing. Your forces and your enemy can perform a large number of actions on the battlefield, from throwing grenades to dropping barrages of artillery on concentrations of enemy forces. Many of these abilities necessitate certain prerequisites, such as a munitions cost to activate or that a specific building be constructed. The ability itself will make clear its requirements. There are also a variety of ability types. Some abilities require you to set a target, while others are timed. Toggled abilities give you the option of ordering the unit into one of two states. Abilities like this grenade attack are triggered by activating the ability and targeting a unit or an area. All timed abilities have an active duration, and when the duration of the ability runs out, the ability is deactivated and begins a recharge. Toggle abilities are triggered by activating and deactivating the ability. All commanders need to mold their forces to suit their command style and to seize and control the objectives of the battlefields. Access the Army Customizer screen from the main menu. First, choose the army you are going to command. Start with your army commanders. You can select up to three for your army. Commanders provide access to abilities, new units and special attacks. Some commanders are more defensive, others aggressive. Having a versatile set of commanders allows you to react to what your enemy does on the battlefield. Secondly, choose from the dozens of intel bulletins that you might have unlocked. Each intel bulletin must be earned by your success on the battlefield, so some may be unavailable. You can also change your vehicle appearance with new camouflage patterns approved by the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht. Both summer and winter patterns have been developed. New content will be made available to you as you climb the ranks, allowing you even more customization options to suit your particular style of command. Once you reach the battlefield, you must earn at least one command point to access your command loadout. Each component of the commander loadout takes a certain number of command points to open, so more powerful options will occur later in the battle. For your infantry, cover can often mean the difference between victory or death. Almost every object you encounter on the battlefield will provide some level of protection for your troops. There are many types of cover on the battlefield. Most cover your infantry will encounter early in the game is directional cover. You must keep cover between yourself and your enemy. Craters, on the other hand, protect your troops from any direction. Secondly, 
different cover types have different levels of durability and protection. A stone wall offers better protection than a wooden fence. When you have a squad selected, the mouse cursor will indicate the quality and distribution of cover on the battlefield. Light cover is represented by a yellow shield. Heavy cover is represented by a green shield. When you find your enemies in cover, you should fall back on simple military training. Use weapons like grenades or other explosives to dislodge your opponent or flank them. Units in cover have defensive bonuses and are difficult to attack from the front. Flanking the position and getting into close range will negate the cover bonus and even the odds. Use your infantry's ability to vault to find new flanking routes or take shortcuts for faster flanking attacks. Flanking is also a great tactic to use against enemy armor, where you can get shots on the lighter side and rear armor. Always look for opportunities to flank the enemy and always try to protect your flanks. You will undoubtedly hear a lot of F-words on the battlefield, but the most important one is flank. A smart commander knows two key factors about the battlefield. They must know the effect of range and movement on combat, and they must know how to utilize strong mixes of units to create effective tactical forces. Weapons are less accurate at long ranges, but long-range weapons like rifles still have an advantage over short-range weapons like submachine guns. Closing the combat range will increase the rate of fire and accuracy of infantry weapons, making close-ranged combat more lethal. Submachine guns excel at close-range combat. However, you have to be careful when closing ground on the enemy. Combined arms is about finding versatile sets of weapons that work well in attack or defense against a variety of threats. Combined arms tactics are usually built around two to three different types of anti-infantry or anti-tank weapons. Mixing a heavy machine gun and a mortar is an effective tactic. The machine gun can suppress the infantry and the mortars, which typically have a difficult time hitting moving units, can easily target the suppressed infantry. Now add an anti-tank gun to the mix for a very powerful force. The machine gun can protect the mortar and the anti-tank gun from infantry, while the anti-tank gun can engage armored vehicles. The Soviets are learning from us. Their powerful mortars and heavy armor give them a strong base for potent combined arms forces. Our soldiers faced temperatures below minus 40 on their drive to Moscow, and few human beings can operate effectively in those temperatures. Unless you prepare for the arrival of General Winter, your soldiers will suffer for your failures and die of exposure. In the open, your troops will suffer from the effects of cold. They will slow down and eventually die. Watch your troops for their current state. A blue thermometer indicates freezing. A red indicates warming. You can protect your troops more fully by garrisoning buildings, moving your troops in half-track personnel carriers, or by building fires with your pioneers. The Soviets will likely attempt the same. Even the Russians don't enjoy minus 40, regardless of what they say. But it gets better, or worse, perhaps. Blizzards and strong winds can increase your exposure, causing your troops to freeze faster. Certain abilities like airstrikes will be unavailable in blizzards, so you might take advantage of the bad weather to seize ground. Just be sure when you are attacking that you pay attention to ice you encounter. Ice can be damaged by the passage of your tanks and vehicles and destroyed by heavy weapons such as mortars, anti-tank guns and artillery, sending unlucky units to a hypothermic death. Watch for deep snow around the battlefield. 
cross it if you must, but be aware that it will slow your troops. Even vehicles will find their movement somewhat slowed by deep snow, although not to the extent of infantry. Finally, both infantry and vehicles will leave tracks in deep snow that will be visible to other combatants. Your pioneers are experts at building structures and defenses. Soviet forces are supported by their combat engineers. In addition, some infantry squads can also build defenses and other structures. Pioneers and combat engineers can repair buildings, vehicles and bridges. Build menus can be found on the command panel of the unit. There are two types, production buildings and field defenses. Production buildings will be able to order in the soldiers and vehicles that comprise your army. Field defenses prevent the enemy from moving freely around the battlefield. Order your pioneers to build a structure from the list. Not all areas of the map will support the construction of a building. While the building is selected, if you want to cancel the order, simply right-click anywhere and it will cancel the selection. To confirm the order, simply left-click on a valid territory and the squad will move to begin construction. Certain structures, like bunkers, must be faced to cover key objectives. These buildings will show you their direction of facing. Face it in the direction you want with a mouse and left-click again to confirm. You can cancel a structure under construction at any time by selecting the Cancel Construction button in the command panel. When a building is completed, it will also activate a selection tab above the command card. You can select buildings from this location from anywhere and order units, set rally points or see what is currently in the queue waiting to be deployed. Battlefield knowledge is vital to tactical success. But no commander has a perfectly clear picture of the battle space or what their enemies are doing. Your units cannot see everywhere at once, nor can they see behind objects that you would expect to block their line of sight. In Company of Heroes 2, all objects on the battlefield taller than a soldier affect line of sight. Notice how your forces cannot see behind this building. This true sight system can be used tactically against the enemy to set up ambushes. Line of sight is dynamic. Burning vehicles and smoke can obscure your force's ability to see, whereas destroying large buildings or blowing holes in walls will allow your units to see into previously blocked areas. When you require additional military forces, select from the appropriate base structure and select the forces you wish to deploy. When they arrive on the battlefield, units will move to the building they were deployed from unless a rally point is set. Rally points can be set for units by selecting the rally point option from the building, or by selecting the building and right-clicking on the map. Each building can have a unique rally location. Units will arrive as close and as quickly as they can to the set rally point. You can cancel a unit deployment by left-clicking on the portrait of the unit in the production queue. Heavy machine guns and aircraft strafing runs can suppress and pin troops, preventing them from advancing. These weapons include the German MG-42 and the Soviet Maxim heavy machine guns. When suppressed, the squad will go to a prone position to minimize their profile. They will be protected, reasonably but not for long. If your squads are no longer under fire, the suppressed troops will eventually come out of suppression and be ready for full combat. Also, it is very important to note that suppressed squads make it far easier for other squads nearby to be suppressed. Machine guns can cover large areas, so keep your squads reasonably spread out. 
a single machine gun can suppress many infantry squads. If you allow your suppressed squads to stay suppressed for too long, they will become pinned. Pinned squads will not be able to move, fire or capture points. But unless you can respond quickly, either by killing the enemy machine gun with another squad or blocking their line of sight with smoke to break contact, the best course of action is to fall back or retreat. Retreating is not an admission of failure. It is a way to keep your highly trained and veteran troops alive. Retreating squads will take the shortest path back to headquarters. And because they are moving quickly, they are far harder to hit. Squads reduced in strength can be quickly reinforced at the headquarters and sent back into battle. Team weapons are capable of inflicting very high levels of damage on infantry and armored vehicles. Weapons like heavy machine guns, mortars and anti-tank guns need a crew to operate and can only attack enemy units that are within their arc of fire. If your team weapon is under fire and at risk of being destroyed, you could retreat, but note that anti-tank guns are so large that they cannot retreat at all. When a team weapon crew withdraws or is killed, the weapon is dropped on the field. The weapon can then be recruited by an infantry squad by right-clicking on the weapon. The Soviets can maintain their weapon teams at full fighting strength by merging conscripts with the team weapon squad, as losses are taken. This makes them durable fighting units, 